YouTube. We're talking college coaches and hot seat talk here today. I'm actually uh, kind of piggybacking off my man Late Kick who just did a segment on hot seat talk in the SEC. And this, this time of year, there's always the hot seat talk. There's always, you know, which coach is not going to be there at the end of the year for various reasons. Obviously, the wins and losses, maybe some other catastrophic things go on throughout the season. And then there are some coaches who come into the season on the hypothetical hot seat. I think in this particular case, the hot seat for Gus Malzahn is more so being imposed by the fan base than it is the actual administration. Because everything that I'm seeing happening at Auburn indicates that there's some full support going on, that there's some working parts going on to get Auburn in a position to be more successful than they have been in the past. A lot of media outlets have, have uh, commented on this, and I've noted this in several of, of my videos. This particular roster is probably going to be one of the more competitive, more talented rosters that Auburn has had in recent history. Of course, Auburn has a tough schedule. Everybody has a tough schedule, so let's throw the schedule deal out of the window. You got to win games and you got to beat the good teams. Auburn has the roster outside of the inexperience at quarterback. Auburn has the roster to be very competitive with this schedule that they have. One thing that Auburn has that a lot of, uh, even some of the SEC teams who are projected uh, to do big things this year, they don't have they, they don't have the experience, and especially the big game experience. You talk about Jeremiah Denson, Daniel Thomas, Nick Cole, Marlon Davidson, Derek Brown. The whole offensive line has big game experience. They've been to the neutral site games before. They've been to Death Valley to play Clemson before and took them all the way to the to the edge. Probably should have beat them. So you're talking about a lot of experience returning for the Auburn Tigers, which will go a long way as to how their schedule can be navigated. You even look at the uh, basketball team for Auburn, the men's basketball from this past year. Do I think the men's basketball team were the most talented team in the country? Oh, heck no. Not even close. However, their experience is something about experience to where you learn how to win big games and I think that's where Auburn could possibly be this particular season which is why they have the opportunity everyone at this point is potential energy in college football no one knows who's going to wind up in the college football playoff of course you want to ordain Alabama Clemson Michigan and Notre Dame your usual Georgia maybe but you never know how this game is going to play out and some of the factors in some, with some of these teams are not being factored in I think amicably or fairly because they don't know. They don't have they don't have the wherewithal to know. You go based on just the pure facts, okay, they went eight and five this year, they lost their quarterback, okay, another seven and five season. That's as simple as a lot of media outlets would want to go with Auburn and, and a lot of teams. Just to go ahead and get the content out of the way, not really dissecting what's really happening, what really could occur with this program based on the totality of the circumstance. Like I said before, Gus Malzahn is, I would say at worst, his seat is warm to begin the season. I think there are some underlined, some documented expectations, and that's with any coach coming into a season. I think you look at the schedule, you look at some opportunities, you set some expectations then you set some goals and when you talk about that the goal obviously is to win the SEC West get to the SEC championship and let the chips fall as they may now an expectation I would assume in this particular situation is let's say hey win nine games and win your bowl game at this point with Gus Malzahn's tenure and with the roster that he and his staff have coming back Nine wins and a bowl win is doable. It's very, very doable. I'm going to tell you why. I think Auburn has the roster to beat Oregon the first week. Will they do it? Only time will tell. I also think Auburn has the roster to 
make a run during that SEC stretch between Texas A&M and LSU. That's what you need. You need a two deep roster to make this happen. You don't need a situation where you're running one running back because it's, it's, that's not sustainable. In the past, the reason that Gus Malzahn has gotten himself, his, himself on the fan hot seat and at times even on the administrative hot seat is because some of his roster availabilities have created lack of sustainability down the stretch during the tough games. Arguably the most important game of the season for the Auburn Tigers in 2017, the SEC championship, walking into that thing with lack of sustainability. You're talking about one of the best defenses in the country and you have one running back. Even if Carrion Johnson was healthy, that's just not a sustainable situation. But what does Auburn have now? Auburn has access to a little bit more depth than usual at the running back position. You're talking Booby Whitlow. You're talking Cam Martin, DJ Williams. Mark Anthony Richards arrives this fall. Sean Shiv is a nice change of pace guy. Harold Joyner, Malik Miller. You're talking about seven guys that Auburn has access to, seven running back savvy guys, not just, you know, uh, a Devin Barrett that you put back there. You have seven serviceable running backs that you can utilize at any time. That's deep. Offensive line, a little questionable. First, uh, the starters, I think, are good to go. Some questions with the reserves, obviously. Hopefully some of the recruits, say Kamar Bell and some of those guys can come in and have some immediate impact to provide some depth. I'm still questioning the center position. But either way, guys, Gus Malzahn has the opportunity to get himself off of the hot seat that, mo that the fan base basically, in my opinion at this point, has put him on. I don't think the administration has him on any kind of hot seat. I think the administration and all the decisions that were made during the offseason puts him in the best position to be successful based on this schedule. Why is Gus on the hot seat? Well, when you talk about the fan base, that's all I can go by because I'm not behind the scenes to hear what's going on with Alan, their meetings, you know, Alan Green and all of those different entities. I, I don't know what they talk about. Alan Green did make mention, by the way, Alan Green is the athletic director. Alan Green did mention that he and Gus Malzahn sit down and talk every week. What do they probably talk about? Only one can speculate. Hey, Gus, what's your plan this week? Hey, when you were successful before, what were you doing? OK, we figured out you were calling plays. So now Gus is back to calling plays. But that's at this point. You know, we, that's, that's something that we have to wait to see in fruition. Now, why Gus is in the hot seat? Well, number one, losing the games that can put you in a position of, you know, prestige really eats at the hearts of your fan base. If you think about the national championship game in 2013, there is not many Auburn fans that have forgotten how gut-wrenching that was to be seconds away from a national championship to lose it on a last second drive. Inexplicable. You got to figure out a way to make that happen. A couple of years later, in 2016, in my opinion, I think an inexplicable loss for Auburn was one, the Clemson game to begin the season with the whole five quarterback thing that, that Auburn had going on and still having an opportunity to win the game late against the best, one of the best teams in the country. That was a bad one. The Georgia game in 2016 was a bad one. No type of adjustments made. You basically lose to a not so talented Kirby Smart team by turnover. I think that's kind of unacceptable. Then you fast forward over to 2017 you're on the road in Baton Rouge for the first time since 1999 with an opportunity. You're thrashing LSU, absolutely thrashing LSU. 
only to lose that game 28 to 23. That game was eerily similar to the loss to Florida State. Kind of looked just like it. That, that's the kind of stuff that gets you on the hot seat. And then your, the post-game interviews that say, oh, man, we had our chances. No shit. We know you had your chances. I'm, I mean, excuse my language. We know you had your chances. Those are the gut-riching situations that Gus Malzahn has created such a bad blood, so to speak, with the Auburn fan base. How casually it seems, perception-wise, it seems that he loses these types of games. 2018, Auburn right in the middle of an opportunity to, you know, be relevant in the conversation. LSU comes to town. Auburn all but beating LSU all over the field up until the middle of the fourth quarter. An inexplicable read by Deshaun Davis and an even even more worse read by Daniel Thomas results in an LSU touchdown late 21 to 19. Then the series of pass interference calls that keeps the drive going ushered LSU right into field goal range to beat Auburn 22 to 21. And that Auburn team in 2018 did not play with that level of intensity again until maybe Purdue. Those are the kind of games as to why Gus is on the hot seat. You got to win the winnables. Same thing with Tennessee. No way you lose to Tennessee. No matter all the, you just don't put yourself in position to lose that game. You get the LSU game back. You get the Tennessee game back. Ten, ten wins, possibly, and no hot seat. Hey, you won ten games. Okay, cool. We would have won it a SEC championship, SEC West, all that stuff. Ten wins, hey, good to go. But losing those types of games are why Gus Malzahn on the hot seat. 2017 again, okay? You lose the SEC championship game. Okay, not good, but hey, you're doing good to be even be there. UCF, presumably one of the hottest teams in the country, riding a winning streak, trying to make an argument every single week as to why they should be a college football playoff team. Who do they match up with in the Peach Bowl? Auburn. Auburn beat the two teams that represented the college football playoff national championship game. Both teams, by the way, out of the SEC. Auburn beat both of them. Beat both of them double digits. UCF in the perfect position to solidify their case as to why they should have been in the college football playoff. What does Auburn not do? Auburn doesn't rise to the occasion. Gus Malzahn and his staff was not able to relay the message as to how important it was for Auburn to win this game to silence UCF and avoid basic college football public embarrassment. He couldn't get him up to do it. Those are the kind of losses that moving forward will continue to have Gus Malzahn on a hot seat. Now, here's the thing. What I'm looking at for Gus Malzahn this year, especially with everything that he has ahead of him, a relatively good coaching staff, great recruiting efforts already for the 2020 class, jump from 29 to 14. Also, a great opportunity ahead out in Arlington, Texas, with a, a game against Oregon would be very nice for Auburn to pull that game off, obviously. National exposure. It's going to be a primetime game on ABC. Would be a good look for Auburn. Good look for Oregon as well. A good showing in that particular game will go a long way recruiting-wise and a long way with this whole hot seat talk, okay? Gus Malzahn has to win the winnable games. And whether the fan base or whether media outlets would like to believe it, based on this roster, Auburn has the opportunity to win that stretch between Texas A&M and LSU or at least come out of there with just one loss. That could be the goal in that situation. Come out of that stretch with one loss and get ready for your stretch in November to try to make a run, at least perception-wise, to say, hey, we're trying to make a run at this SEC West uh, 
championship. All right, guys, let me know what you think about this whole uh, pre uh, postseason, uh, preseason, uh, Gus Malzahn, hot seat talk, um, state of the program, all of those different types of things. Want to give a shout out to NMD TV, who's also talked some hot seat talk and also the late kick who's talked hot seat talk as well. Very, very good uh, sports analyst here on YouTube. Uh, once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast for Vernon Speak Sports Auburn, where it's always great to be an Auburn Tiger on my channel. Also, go ahead and like this video, subscribe, click the button so you don't miss any of the content. As always, War Eagle.